Hey folks, it's Chris Brenton, and in this video, I wanted to talk about some of the changes between Rita version 4 and Rita version 5, the newest version, because it's more than just a you know, couple of little minor updates. Uh, we've, we've done a complete overall for all of the system. Uh, one of the things that's changed is how you, the, how you interact with the interface. I'll talk about that in just a second. But I wanted to start with uh, some of the backend changes, because those are pretty major. Uh, historically, we've we've deployed directly on a system. So when you've installed Rita, when you've installed Zeek, it's been directly onto the host system. Uh, with the latest version, we're actually going in and we're installing things within containers. So this is a, um, if I, well, actually, let's start with Rita version 4. So if I say sudo docker ps I have no containers there at all. Actually, let's do a uh, let's do an images. That'll really tell us. Okay, I got a couple of Zeek images on there, but I'm, I don't have anything for Rita. I go to version five though and do the same thing. sudo docker ps. I notice I've got a ClickHouse one running. That's our new database system. So we used to use Mongo for the back end of Rita. We've changed to ClickHouse. ClickHouse is so much faster. Uh, especially with structured data. Um, it also seems to be a little bit more compatible with mul multiple different flavors of Linux. That was one of the other problems we ran into with Mongo. Um, so yeah, we've changed the back end over to ClickHouse. Unfortunately, it's not compatible, meaning if you've got old Rita 4 databases, you can't import them into Rita version 5. However, if you take the Zeek logs that you use to create those Rita version 4 databases, you can read those directly into Rita 5, and you can recover the data that way. Uh, we've also got a logging process uh, to be able to go through and log out information. Now, if I go in and I run the Rita command on version 4, this is how I used to interact with Rita before. So if I wanted to go in and, let's say, look at IP-based beacons, I'd say Rita space, well, and actually, let's do it. <laughs> so I'm going to say Rita space show beacons. And I'll look in the lab one data set because I know that's there. And I'm going to pump it through head just so we've got limited output. And this is the type of data I'd get out of it. Now, if I that only shows me IP-based beacons. If I want to see beacons based on fully qualified domain name, HTTP or HTTPS data, I'd have to go look someplace else. Oh, it's bouncing through a proxy. Well, there's someplace else to look for that. Oh, long connections that may be closed or open. Well, there's two other places to look for that. So you see where we're going. With Rita version 4, you had a bunch of different places you needed to look in order to be able to get the data. And when you ran that, all you saw was just that information. And it came out kind of like this, which, you know, is helpful. Like I know what the score is, the source, the destination IP. I can see how many different connections took place. But I still need to kind of pull in some other pieces like, well, but did they do a DNS lookup before they connected to this IP? You know, what is that system? So it, it was kind of left to you to be able to do a little bit of running around. If you look at version 5 of Rita, the newest version, you can see the number of commands are <laughs> dramatically reduced. So I can say Rita list, and that'll show me any databases that are on that system. And I have a database named something, which is actually the same as the lab one, one on the other system. But I can also go in, uh, if I want to see my data, the only option I have for that is a view. So I'm going to say Rita show something and when I do, rather than having to jump around in multiple different screens like I had to before, oh, wait a minute. Spelling matters, Chris. So I'm going to say Rita view something. There we go. <laughs> that should actually work. I mean, look at the difference between the two. You can see Rita 4 in the background here, where it's just a comma separated CSV output. Here we've actually got uh, some bubble, t we've got a bubble T ASCII graphical interface running, uh, which makes it a whole lot easier to go through and process. We're also breaking things out based on uh, connect uh, based on sessions. And we're going through and we're giving you a severity level to work with to decide how to go through and do it. But historically, we've used a score, but a score is kind of arbitrary. You know, severity, we're always kind of used to that. Ooh, critical, really bad. <laughs> you know, we need to take care of that first. Hi, yeah, that's kind of important too. Medium, eh, maybe we get around with it. I mean, you know, you get the idea. Every environment looks at these differently. But, you know, the, the ratings are kind of the same. Also notice this first one is getting flagged because it's got a high beacon score. But if I scroll down a little bit, 
this is a long connection, and that's why that one's getting flagged. So what's kind of nice here is that rather than having to jump around between different screens and figure out my priority, it's all in one place. What I love about this interface, let me expand this out. What I love about this interface is that it's just very deceiving. It looks very simple compared to what we had before, but it actually conveys a lot more information. So if I go back to this first one, right, this is being labeled as critical. Why? Well, it's got a 100% beacon score. There were 2,868 connections that took place over this time. The two systems were communicating with each other for a total of almost 18 minutes over that period of time. And here's some new parameters that we've thrown into here. Prevalence. How prevalent is this destination on our network? In other words, is it just this one system talking to it? Or, you know, let's say I've got a thousand systems, right? If I see that this is the only system talking to that target out on the internet, that makes it kind of suspicious, right? Whereas if 900 of my 1,000 systems are talking to it, it's less likely to be suspicious. It's probably going to end up being something fairly common. First scene, this really only kicks in if you're analyzing data live, because what it does is it looks at when was this first scene on the network. And it's a little deceiving when you look at a PCAPs because it's always going to work with the amount of time that's in the PCAP. So in this case here, I have a 24-hour PCAP. This was first started seeing it in the beginning of the PCAP. That's why it's saying, you know, oh, this was first seen 23 hours ago. Where this really comes into play is when you start watching data live, because now I may see, oh, hey, you first talked to that system 90 days ago. Well, something I've been talking to for three months or more is less likely to be hostile than something that, you know, just showed up on my network today. You know, that's something I'm going to want to go in and pay attention to. So we've tried to give you a few more parameters to work with. Mime type mismatch. What does that mean? What that's telling me is that my system, or excuse me, the, um, the mime type being offered up by the server doesn't match the type of file that's being handed back. So for example, the URL might be accessing a JPEG, but the server is saying, oh, treat that like a text file. Well, no, it should be handling it like an image slash JPEG. That doesn't make sense. You know, and that's pretty common in command and control channels. So we're going in, we're flagging that. That's part of what made this critical. Rare user agent strength. So in other words, when you look at the user agent strings being used by the system, the only time it's using this is when it's talking to this particular target out on the internet. Well, that doesn't sound good, right? I should be using the same user agent consistently, you know, if I'm using the same browser all the time. So what we've, so notice we've, we've taken a lot of uh, peripheral data that you used to have to do manual lookups on and pulled it all into one screen. So we've consolidated having to run around to multiple places, put it all in one spot. So it makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker to go through and do your threat hunt. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest changes between version four and version five. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. Got a couple other videos on ready version five. If this looks interesting to you, feel free to go through and check those out as well. Catch you in another video.